organized crime syndicates are deeply entrenched in Japanese history. Known as the Yakuza, they were once seen as gangsters with a strict code of honor, helping police the criminal underworld. Their traditional tattoos symbolize their commitment to the Yakuza way of life. In the Edo era, men in certain occupations had such tattoos. Not just the Yakuza, but men like carpenters, builders and firefighters. They are all fit and skillful. When you compare their tattoos, the Yakuza stood out even more. Tattoos were fascinating to these men because it was a sign of strength and courage. Four centuries later, the legacy of the Yakuza is more than skin deep as they snake between both sides of the law, heroes to some, a menace to others. We had a nationwide problem a few years ago. Foreigners, especially illegal Chinese, were running drug and prostitution rings and rigging slot machines in gambling parlours. They committed all sorts of crimes, even armed robbery. I say this with confidence. We got rid of them. But the romance of their legacy is fading fast, given the Yakuza's links to extortion, drug trafficking and deadly armed assaults. The estimated revenue runs into billions of dollars a year. Authorities have set a new law to strangle their existence. I'm Chan Tao Cho. In this edition of 101 East, we enter the dark side of Japan and ask, is this the end of the mighty Yakuza? This is Kabukicho, a red light district in the heart of Tokyo with more than 3,000 adult entertainment outlets. Decades of organized crime activities add to its seedy reputation. Increased policing has curtailed acts of brazen extortion and intimidation once common in this part of town. But Yakuza operations have blended into the bright lights. Masaru Jo is the head of a local business association. It conducts weekly patrols here to ensure touts don't harass the public. But even they avoid the lanes found under Yakuza territories. I hesitate to say this, but there is order where there are Yakuza territories. When no one is in charge, people move freely and there is more customer harassment. But the Yakuza would say, this is my patch, don't mess with us. They expel troublemakers and keep the order. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. By the end of last year, authorities implemented a new law nationwide targeting organized crime. It is now an offense for individuals and companies to have any dealings that benefit the Yakuza or people related to them. The aim is to choke their sources of revenue. But Joe says the police are up against an invisible enemy. They're not too visible as they avoid the public eye. But that doesn't mean they're gone. They can go underground and have other schemes. Despite the new law, he says some of these schemes outsmart even the police. Credit card companies don't allow their cards to be used in these adult entertainment outlets, yet some shops indicate that they accept credit cards, making customers think they're legal. But when you charge the bill to your card, it goes through a different credit facility. Normally, there's a 3% processing fee, but this facility takes over and charges 15%, of which 10% goes to the Yakuza. That's how it works. It's wrong, isn't it? But there's not enough evidence to make it punishable by law. That's why we urge the police, do your job, please set the necessary laws. The line between both sides of the law used to be murky in Japan. Five years ago, I was driving home in my Maserati sports car. A white car pulled up in front. The driver got out, pointed a gun at me and said, Who the hell do you think you are? I'm going to shoot you. I said, Are you mad? What are you doing? He thought I was from a rival Yakuza group. I told him who I was and his attitude changed completely. He probably knew my name. 
I feared he was going to kill me. He looked crazy. Former police detective Akihito Saruta lives in this quiet Osaka neighborhood. His extensive connections with the Yakuza landed him a lucrative consultant business after he retired from the police force. Companies facing difficulties with crime syndicates hired him to provide advice and help with negotiation. But times are changing. New regulations make it illegal to have any ties with the mob. Saruta has laid off his staff, sold his sports car and plans to wind up his business. With the new law in place, I just want to retire as soon as I can. I've been through so much hardship and danger. Honestly, I'd rather stay away and not have to deal with them anymore. Saruta is a well-known personality. This comic book illustrates his heyday 20 years ago. It reveals a time when the police worked with the Yakuza to crack cases. A detective in charge of a particular group would develop a relationship with the boss. The Yakuza would give him information. It was a sincere relationship, but it was crucial not to cross the line and become too close. Detectives met the Yakuza for meals and drinks as part of the job. We can't do that now, so gathering evidence must be much more difficult. The police objective was to arrest people and solve crimes. But arresting everyone didn't help the case any further if you soured relationships. So we tell them, we have to arrest all the way to the top, but we'll stop here for you. Tell us what really happened. It's not good for people to know this, but that's how we struck deals. It was a win-win situation. Across Japan, there are close to 80,000 Yakuza members belonging to 22 organizations, five of them based in Kyushu in the southwest. Police say this region is a hotbed of Yakuza violence. Last year, there were 18 gang-related shootings in Fukuoka Prefecture out of 44 nationwide. Recent incidents include death threats against the city mayor and hand grenade attacks. Among this year's hit list, a former Yakuza shot dead and a retired police inspector badly injured. Police are determined to win the war against the mobs. They will have to follow our strengthened laws. They will be cornered. They cannot resist even if they try it. They will have to change and end their activities. The construction industry is a big money spinner for the Yakuza. Police say gangs are retaliating against companies that refuse to engage them for projects or pay them extortion money. A construction boss was shot dead last November and another wounded two months later. For all this, the police blame one Yakuza group, the Kudokai. With fear hanging over the industry, we were unable to interview anyone from a construction company. It's even rarer for the Yakuza to speak to the media. But a senior Kudokai member agrees to meet us at a pre-arranged location. His chauffeured car leads the way to the headquarters in Fukuoka city of Kitakyushu. Hiroshi Kimura is a branch leader of the Kurokai and one of his top-ranked members. He says they're coping with the tougher laws. There are businesses that supported us all along so we can continue our regular jobs. I cannot say who they are as the police will intrude and take away our jobs. It's a game of cat and mouse. You have to be discreet. Each member has a small business. We support each other. That's our situation now, to be honest. Will the Kudokai resort to violence if there's really no way out? <laughs> That's a difficult question. I'm not thinking about violence. Most of us don't. We're small, but there are a thousand members. Some of them may have the wrong ideas. We can't know the minds of everyone. But fighting fair and square is our fundamental position. We'll fight legally. 
There were 18 shootings in Kita Kyushu last year, but not a single member arrested. Yet through the mass media, the police say it's all done by the Kudokai. So no matter what, the public see the Kudokai as guilty of all evil crimes. So are you saying that none of your people were involved in the shootings and the violent assaults? Be it past or present, I declare that the Kudokai, as an organization, have never been involved. There is no proof. If there are so many people, one or two might go astray. To prevent that, we meet monthly to reflect and emphasize. Do not commit crimes, do not trouble the public, and strictly no involvement in drugs. How do you ensure that what you say is implemented across the board? We're often called criminal groups, but any organization has dropouts who commit crimes. Be it the police, be it politicians, or staff of big companies, there are criminals. We're not saying it's okay, but it happens. What are you going to do in order to survive? We have always adapted to circumstances and survived. The police call us violent groups. We don't identify with it. We have pride in the Yakuza's code of chivalry and will pass it on for generations to come. The citizens are the ones disadvantaged by the law. The police blacklist our old friends for being close to the Yakuza. If we have a meal together, they publicize their names and cancel their bank accounts and transactions. Showing us the Kurokai ceremonial room, Kimura tells us his members posted audio recordings online of police officers confronting them in public. Before we part, he says they are suing the Fukuoka police for harassment and abuse of powers. We tracked down one of the recordings made recently when the police pulled up a Kurokai member to check his car. They are free to sue us if they wish, but the police will counter back. We will show we didn't do anything illegal. In Fukuoka Prefecture, only one out of 21 recent shooting cases were solved. It is illegal to own firearms in Japan. You can safely consider them the work of the Yakuza. But the police solve only one case. It shows how well they are doing. Veteran journalist and non-fiction writer Atsushi Mizoguchi is a Yakuza expert. Over the years, he and his son have survived knife attacks in retaliation of his works criticizing the mob. He says the new law hurts the lower levels of the Yakuza most. Within the Yakuza, the revenue distribution is top-heavy. If those at the bottom can't pay their monthly fee, the base of the triangle will crumble and affect the higher levels. That explains the violence in Fukuoka. They are desperate to survive and showing their fangs at the civilians. But Mizoguchi doubts the government's resolve to get rid of the Yakuza. He questions why various laws over the years have targeted Yakuza activities but have never made their existence illegal. His sources tell him there's a hidden agenda. With some 10,000 police officers retiring every year, the presence of the Yakuza provides them lucrative second careers. The police need them. Various industries tend to employ retired officers to counter Yakuza shareholders who influence corporate decisions. Retired officers provide them advice and protection. Now citizens are responsible for denying the Yakuza, who are not illegal. You put your life at stake when you encounter them. 
The police have effectively backed down from their role of protecting public safety. People like Akira Konagamitsu are now at the front line of this fight. He runs a bar. Under the new law, he's meant to turn away Yakuza customers. It's hard to tell whether someone is a Yakuza or not. People think they are bad guys, but they look like any other person. Honestly, we don't know. The Yakuza who come to my bar don't misbehave. The people in Kitakyushu have seen a lot of Yakuza activities for a long time. If you don't show them your weakness or get involved with them, they don't trouble you. That's not always true. Beneath the calm of Kyushu is a deadly battleground for two of Japan's most vicious Yakuza groups. The Sedokai and the Dojinkai are known for drug trafficking and firearm attacks despite the tougher laws. In this rustic region, gangland feuds have affected the lives of ordinary people. Atsuki Miyamoto's husband was in hospital for a sports injury in November 2007. He never came home. Before, when the general public saw news on the Yakuza, it's just another story. Even though we knew their people were in the same hospital as we were, we had no sense of danger. At the time, a Sedokai Yakuza was warded in the same hospital. He swapped rooms with Miyamoto's husband, Hiroshi. Disaster struck when his rival gang sent an assassin. Hiroshi took two bullets, later proven a case of mistaken identity. His bloodied shirt shows one round penetrated his shoulder and a fatal shot through his torso. The 61-year-old gunman was sentenced to 24 years in jail. When their father died, I told my children he didn't do anything bad. I told them life is the most important. I'm trying my best to give them a normal family life, to be both father and mother. I will move on to face my own life with optimism. Every day, Miyamoto places a cup of rice for her husband at the ancestral altar before dinner with her children. I don't mention their father to them, but it's hard when we attend festivals. Normally, kids go with their dad and mum, but we have no father figure with us. People generally aren't aware of how close the Yakuza are to us. They're right there, but we don't sense the danger. I welcome tougher laws if it removes them. But every citizen needs to realize how dangerously close they are. Our society will only change if we change our mindsets along with the introduction of laws. One man who knows the pulse of the Yakuza only too well wants to make changes. It was six on one. They bashed me all over. I had a serious eye injury. I couldn't stand for a month. There was just too many of them. It was the only time I lost a fight. After seven years in jail over three terms, 41-year-old Tatsuya Shindo's criminal days are over. Once a high-flying gangster with Japan's second-largest Yakuza group, Sumi Yoshikai, he is now a Christian pastor. They liked me. I worked hard. I was promoted and had my own men. I earned a lot of money. For me, the quickest way was to sell drugs. I crashed the organization's car while drink driving. It was the second time I did that, so I chopped off my finger as punishment.
After the police busted him for drugs in 2001 and sent him to jail for the third time, Shindo found forgiveness in faith. He discovered the Bible while in prison. On his release two years later, he took up theological studies and started this church near Tokyo in his mother's cafe, reaching out to society's dropouts. The congregation includes former Yakuza and their family members. Our job is to encourage those reluctant or refusing to change, tell them they can get better. We lead by example. Being a Yakuza is like a bloodstain. The longer you don't remove it, the more permanent it becomes. Faith can purify you instantly, but our habits, our Yakuza mentality, that takes daily hard work to change. It's a special day for Shindo. His former Yakuza senior who inducted him into the underworld is here. Tadashi Ono spent 10 years in jail and was only released recently. After the service, Shindo and some of the former Yakuza catch up with Ono. The world has changed so much, I feel lost. The economy is bad and there's no work. How do we support ourselves? I think it's difficult. You see, there's no finger. You're missing fingers like this. My finger is long, so you might not notice a missing part. But if you've got short fingers on both hands, that's a big handicap. People look at these fingers no matter how I hide them. I'm not trying to lie, but I don't want to intimidate others. So I'm always careful about trying to hide my fingers. When it comes to trust, there's none even if you confess your sins. You may have a job and new friends around you. People still look at you differently, like a criminal. Because of my past, I have difficulty finding a job, even through the government's employment service centre. No matter how much I want to be useful, people think about my past rather than what I can contribute in the future. Shindo says if society continues to reject former Yakuza or those wishing to leave the underworld, then they're likely to stay involved in crime. So whatever the law says, he will keep his ties with them. If an old friend wants to leave the Yakuza, he would come to me. But if I don't talk to him, he would feel I'm distant and refuse to seek my help. So whether or not he's Yakuza, I should talk to him if I'm a friend. Ya. Ku. Za. That means eight, nine and three. The worst combination for a type of Japanese blackjack. The original Yakuza referred to this losing hand which became associated with criminal groups of gamblers and jobless outcasts. The Yakuza today are a lot more complex than the law caters for, says Manabu Miyazaki, a writer and a social critic. His father was a Yakuza boss. When you talk about the Yakuza, you have to include their family members, friends and relatives. If each person knows 10 others, there will be at least 700,000 people involved with the Yakuza. You have to consider the rights of every one of them. The consequences of the new law ripple across Japanese society. Those affected are concerned that in the crackdown on the Yakuza, the toughest fight could be at the very top. Political figures, regional businesses like sake brewers, company owners or rich people, they would use the Yakuza to solve their problems. They are the powerful, rich and famous who have to maintain a public image. The Yakuza have prospered for centuries by reaching all levels of society. But they are facing their toughest battle yet, as authorities involve ordinary citizens in the fight against the criminal underworld. <laughs>